Welcome back everyone, I'm Dylan, this is All You Can Board, and this is another edition of our new games I am excited for. And honestly, you should be excited about some of these too, because there's some really cool games we're gonna talk about today. So, this is seven new games that have been announced over the last couple months, or you know, even somewhat in the last couple weeks, um, that have become uh, ones that are now right in the middle of my radar that I'm keeping tabs on. And in some cases, we might be getting some of these, you know, sooner than others, and some of them we might have to wait well over a year for. Uh, but either way, these are ones that I just cannot wait to play for one reason or another. So we're not gonna delay anymore, I'm gonna jump right into the first one. This one you may have heard of because right after I found out about it, it shot to the top of the board game hot list right away. It was number one for a while, it's still I think in the top five, and that is A Legacy of You. This is from Garpill Games, a designer designed by Shem Phillips. The reason that I'm excited about this one so much is that Hadrian's Wall came out last year in 2021, and it was one of those games that I heard about, I knew about, and it went right under my radar, uh, not in the sense that, I guess under the radar, uh, uh, knowingly. I purposely said, hey, I'm just not, I don't think this is gonna be a game for me, I'm not gonna look into it, I'm not gonna buy it, but uh, it's cool that people were interested in it. Then Carlo uh, got it and played it and kept raving about it to the point where I said, I need to just try this game, uh, and I did, and it ended up becoming one of my you know, biggest surprises of last year in terms of how much I enjoyed it. I think it was fourth on my uh, best games of 2021, spoiler alert if you haven't watched that yet. Um, and so this is a solo only game coming from Garp Hill Games. So because of how great a solo experience Hadron's Wall was, um, I am super intrigued by this one to see what they can do tackling a game that is solo only. Uh, Hadrian's Wall is great solo, but it did incorporate some other modes as well. And what's interesting about this is it's sort of a solo campaign game too, and if you know me, you know I love my campaign games. Uh, the way this one's gonna go is it's a fully resettable campaign game, so you're not gonna just play it once and be done with it. Uh, if you lose seven games or win seven games, that's sort of the trigger that it's gonna end your campaign. So which if you win seven, you win the campaign. If you lose seven, you lose the campaign. So you could uh, play upwards of 13 games to be able to, uh, figure out whether you win or lose the campaign. So it has a variable length, which, which is pretty neat. Um, and basically it's gonna be your job to build the canals uh, ahead of the impending flood is sort of the the thematics that are behind this this uh, this game. So it seems like there's a lot of mechanics at play here. Honestly, we don't have a lot of photos aside from some cards, but in terms of the mechanisms that, that are listed on Board Game Geek, we have things like chaining and uh, deck bag and pool building, hand management, campaign game, a solo, worker placement. So a lot of uh, mechanics that I enjoy, a lot of things that usually get me excited about games. So there's just a lot of things at play here that are making this jump to the top of my list. I honestly cannot wait to find out when and how I'm gonna be able to get my hands on this. Uh, this is gonna be an instant buy for me. Um, and, now, and honestly, Hadrian's Wall should have been if I knew how much I was gonna enjoy it. Um, so that's the reason it's the first one I'm talking about. If you happen to have not seen this on Board Game Geek, I would highly recommend just going in, reading the description, seeing if it's for you, especially if you're someone who enjoys solo games. This sounds like a solo only game coming from a, a, a publisher with a good track record for the games they produce, um, really tackling that solo only genre. So that might be exciting for a lot of you that play a lot of solo games, it sure is for me. That is Legacy of You. Next up is a game that I honestly wanted to include on uh, the last edition of this video series that I did and I completely forgot. That's the reason it's ending up on this one, but luckily, or I guess not luckily, uh, it's not coming out for a while, so I didn't miss the boat on it or anything, but that means we do have to wait a little bit longer, uh, a while longer, and that is Fit to Print. Now this is coming from Flat Out Games, uh, published by Flat Out Games, I should say, um, who we have a we have played a bunch of their games uh, from the design side, from the publishing side, games like uh, Calico and Truffle Shuffle and Cascadia and uh, point salad, like the, the list goes on and on. So there's a whole bunch of games. They're a, they're a publisher now that whenever a game is announced by them, we're usually excited about it. The other reason I'm excited about this is that the art is done by Ian O'Toole, who I really, really enjoy his artwork. And it's designed by Peter McPherson, who you may be familiar with having designed Tiny Towns. Now, Tiny Towns is a game that Carl absolutely adores, even more so than me. I really enjoy it as well. And so I'm just really excited to see what he's gonna do with this genre of game. And what's interesting about Fit to print is that it is a game that involves completely simultaneous play, um, which I, I think the only game I can think of, and I have only played it once that does that is Galaxy Trucker. And I know there's other ones out there. I'm not saying that's the only one, but just in terms of the ones I've played, uh, I guess Magic Maze would be another one too. But it's it's a it's a type of game mechanism and genre that you know I don't necessarily gravitate towards, but that might just be because I haven't seen 
you know, someone do it in a way that really captivates me and really captures me and wants me to come back and, you know, uh, explore that mechanism, that type of game more often. Fit to Print has all the, the, has the recipe with the publisher and with the designer and everything to have the best chance of landing for me. Um, and it sounds really, really neat. So the, the thematics of, you know, working at a newspaper essentially, but a newspaper ra uh, run by, you know, woodland critters, creatures, uh, essentially is the best way to describe it, is an amazing theme that, uh, that I, I just love the artwork on it already from what we've seen. I'm really excited to see more of the components as well. So Fit to Print is a tile laying game, but again, it plays simultaneously. So essentially all players are designing their front page of the newspaper uh, on their desks in front of them and you're gonna be collecting newspaper tiles to do so once you think you are uh, have collected the tiles you need to produce the best layout that you possibly can in terms of you know uh, editorial and photography and all that kind of stuff you're gonna yell layout and at that point you're gonna be able to uh, start laying out the page with the tiles that you've collected at that uh, when you finish that you're yelling out print to let everyone know you're going to the printing stage and at that point you're gonna be uh, the first one off to the press and you're gonna get a bonus for being the first one to do so so you are trying to finish your front page as quickly as possible, but I imagine you're essentially going to be scoring points for how well you've laid out your page in contrast to other players around the table. So it's not going to all come down to you were the first one you won. It's going to also be who created the best front page layout of their newspaper. Interestingly enough, if a real-time game like this isn't something you gravitate towards, it's actually mentioned that they're going to have a number of alter uh, alternative modes that are not real-time. So that's pretty cool because someone like me who doesn't necessarily, I can't say that I love that type of game real time, um, but you know, I want to be proven wrong. Ha there's going to be options that if I end up not loving the real time aspect, I can try other things as well. So really for me, the reason this is on the list is because I follow most things that come out from Flat Out Games. Um, I like uh, Peter McPherson as a designer a lot, so I'm really interested in the games that he's doing. The artwork is gorgeous by Ian O'Toole, so you have the recipe for success across all those layers, and then the actual theme itself and the gameplay all sounds really interesting. So everything about this speaks to me. I cannot wait to play this. I think it's gonna be one of my, you know, uh, the ones I'm looking forward to most in 2022. Um, and honestly, we um, the only, because and I say in 2022, but that's only because the Kickstarter campaign is coming out in 2022. So that's more to find out more. We are not gonna be actually getting this in our hands until 2023, which if you're wondering why this wasn't included on our most anticipated games of 2022, that's pretty much why is that it's not gonna be a game we're likely getting in our hands this year. But when we do get this in our hands, it's one that I can expect is probably gonna hit the table a lot for me, unless something about the real-time mechanics really just do not land for me and the alternative modes you know aren't you know good enough but I, I i have all the faith in the world i'm very optimistic cannot wait to find out more next up a game that is not on board game geek yet so this one obviously uh lots could change it has been talked about for a while and that is terra mystica age of innovation so terra mystica is a game that i have wanted to buy for so long and for one reason or another i just haven't and honestly the biggest reason is that i know it's going to be a game that i want to play a bunch of times and it's it is a more of a complex game and I'm going to have to find people to be able to play different player counts. And honestly, with all the new games we're playing and all the new games and all just the games in general that we're playing and getting, um, it's just one that I've just kind of pushed constantly. Interestingly enough, Gaia Project came out and Gaia Project is basically a re-implementation of Terra Mystica with a brand new theme and then a new modular board and a whole bunch of new changes to basically make the experience a little bit better and stronger. And that that was a, a weird thing for me because I am I gravitate way more to the fantasy theme than I do to the space theme. The space theme is just not something that it takes a lot for it to land with me or I have to be able to ignore it because the gameplay is so good. It's just for some, whatever reason, it has to be a specific, done in a specific way, I think, to really intrigue me. Otherwise, I just don't find as much interest compared to something like the fantasy uh, theme in board games. Um, and so Terra Mystica is always the one I wanted to get, but I found out about all these improvements in Gaia Project and I thought, well, which is the better experience for me to play? Apparently, Age of Innovation is, is a new uh, implementation of Terra Mystica. So this is not a, a, an expansion. This is a standalone new version of Terra Mystica that I, if I had to guess, would be taking a bunch of the improvements that were made in Gaia Project and basically releasing a new version of Terra Mystica with things like potentially maybe a modular board or improvements to balance or new mechanics, whatever the case may be. It's a new way to experience uh, Terra Mystica. So as someone who has taken way too long to get into this game, this might be, you know, 
know, the, the blessing in disguise where I said, well, you know, I took this long, but now I can start with this brand new version of Terra Mystica. So honestly, all I can find, uh, it, I, I heard about this game randomly through a forum post. Um, otherwise, I had no idea it even existed. I ended up finding a couple other forum posts where people are talking about some of the things that we might be seeing. There's even a, a video, I think, from uh, October 2020 or something like that at, at a convention where using components from the original Terra Mystica, we were getting some examples being shown of improvements they're thinking of making. Obviously, that this doesn't have a BGG page. It might be, you know, for all I know, it might be a couple years out yet. I have no idea if that's if this is a 2022 game, a 2023, or in the future. All I know is that I'm super excited about it. I'm going to be keeping an eye to see when we get images, cover art, components, more information, release date, and as those things come out, it's going to be shooting to the top of my list of games I'm anticipating. And uh, I'm definitely going to be buying this one the second it comes out because this will be my chance to finally dive into Terra Mystica with a version that hopefully, you know, even correct some of the issues people had with the original. So that is Terra Mystica Age of Innovation. The name might change too, but just so you know, that's the game we're looking at. Next up, we have a game called Circles. So Circles, the reason it's on this list for me is I don't honestly know a whole lot about this game other than the description and the cover art. I can get a bit of an idea of what we could see, but it is designed by Thomas Singh, who if you are familiar with The Crew, which at this point, I feel like everyone <laughs> in some way has heard about The Crew because of how much acclaim it's been getting. Um, the Crew's had two versions. It is, uh, you know, gone on to mass acclaim in terms of awards and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mass success on, on uh, you know, ending up on people's shelves and on people's lists. It is a fantastic game and er it honestly deserves the acclaim it gets. And Thomas Singh is coming out with a brand new game called Circles. So I am intrigued because of how much I have enjoyed the crew to see what he does with a genre that is not trick-taking and not card-based card, uh, card based and is completely different. So Circles basically features this double-sided game board with two different experiences, one on each side, and there's going to be, it's, it's circular, and then the inside of the board, there's gonna be the, you know, the actual gameplay mechanics itself or, or what you're trying to land on, things like that, but the outside of the board is essentially a felt ring. We're gonna be taking like roulette style, a roulette, type ball and spinning it around the outside and I would have to imagine the where it stops in relation to what it's you know touching in the middle of the board is going to do different things to your game so rather than rolling a die or you know things like that you're spinning this ball around the outside so I think that it, for sure it's a bit of a gimmick um, I am someone who falls for uh, gimmicks all the time and I don't mean that in a negative way I just like new experiences and, and things that I, ha I haven't seen before and playing around with them this one definitely has that um, and it just because Thomas, Thomas Singh has designed these games that I, I've really Really, really loved I have faith that what I'm gonna find here is something that I'm gonna be excited about so based on what we know about it all all we all we know from the description is that um, a player is rolling a ball in the felt covered exterior ring of the track and you're gonna place the ball in the right spaces and you'll make good progress that's very vague uh, I think it just happens to you know uh, fall in line with wherever the ball lands, different things are gonna happen. We do know that each side of the board is gonna offer a completely different game using the same mechanic, but you know, different things you're trying to do, different themes. So it says one side of the game board, you'll dive into the wild of west to mine gold uh, and silver and fight bandits and things like that. Um, and fulfill your dream of owning your own ranch. So if you're if you've always had the dream of fulfilling uh, of owning your own ranch, Circles is going to provide that to you apparently. Uh, and on the other side, you'll visit the shooting range to try your hand at various targets. So either way, I'm very intrigued. It also doesn't look like a game that's going to cost very much. It seems like it's going to be pretty affordable, much like the crew. So even if it happens to be a game that doesn't land, it's not like you're you know you're hundred dollars invested in this thing and you have to try to force it at that point. It, it can just be a game that doesn't land. But I am very intrigued. I cannot wait to find out what it plays like and you know what is all involved with it maybe we'll have another hit in our hands and we'll see new versions of circles all the time just like we do with the crew at this point uh time time will tell but i can't wait to find out next up we have a game that i'm i'm hopefully not going to mispronounce uh but knowing me i will and that is a gondolier gondolieri 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 something like that um it is uh, designed by michael kiesling and andrea schmidt which is one of the reasons that it uh you know jumped to the top of my list of games i was interested in uh they, they have designed uh games like heaven and ale together michael kiesling has been in a whole bunch of games that we've covered he's a designer that we really have enjoyed carlo and i this is a, a game that is going to apparently be very similar to a game called Can't Stop, if you've heard of that. Now, this Can't Stop is a game that Carlo and I have played a whole bunch of on Board Game Arena, especially during the pandemic. It is a really quick push-your-luck game where you're essentially rolling dice and then making taking comp, t rolling four dice and taking two as a combination, and you're moving up the tracks uh, that... Uh, um, 
that are uh, numbered t two to 12. And depending on what you roll, you're able to push different tracks up. But if you ever roll something that you cannot fulfill on any of the tracks, you bust and you lose all the progress you've just made. So at any point you can choose to stop and you lock in that progress and that's where you'll start from on your next turn. So you really, it's a full push your luck game, but it, you know, even though it, it's, Definitely, it didn't even end up in my top 50 games of all time. Like it's not an or Carlo, so it's not a game that you know we absolutely adore or anything like that. It is a game we've played a lot of and can easily go back to and just throw in a couple of rounds and we have a lot of fun playing it. So Gondolieri is is a game that sounds like it's going to be doing a lot of that same thing, just with a completely different thing, a theme and obviously have some in, injection of brand new mechanics as well. So uh, players are going to slip into the role of the Gondolieri, which is that, I guess that's the name of the person who drives the, the gondolas uh, or, you know, uh, is the person who's pushing the oar in the water and stuff. I have no idea. I really, I, my, my back background on gondolas is, is about this this uh, small. So uh, you'll have to just inform me in the comments if I'm getting any of that wrong. Um, but you're basically taking your passengers to the most sought after sites and depending how you move up the canals um, is gonna uh, be sort of that push your luck aspect and the dice rolling that where it comes in. So we don't have any images aside from the box art. All I can go off of is the description on Board Game Geek and what it sounds like it's going to play into and the fact that it is from uh, tr designers that I trust to, to deliver good products. So. I'm really curious to find out how this ranks for me uh, against Can't Stop. Maybe this is something that'll replace Can't Stop for me, especially because I don't, I can't find a physical version of Can't Stop. Um, it would be nice to have a physical version of a game like this to be able to play with people who just want to have some fun and don't need a lot of rules or a lot of time investment. Um, it does say it's going to be like a 30 minute game. I imagine the weight will be really low. It's a two to five player game as well. So lots to be excited about here. That is Gondolieri or Gondolieri, depending on how badly or good I'm pronouncing this. Next up, we have a game called Underdogs. Now, Carlo tipped me off to this. I think he heard about it on Twitter. Um, and honestly, I had no idea this game existed until he sent me the, the link. And the reason I'm excited about it is because it is described as an interactive deck management game for one to eight players. But when you look into it a little bit more, they are basically trying to create a, like an auto battler in the vein of like Hearth, uh, Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Um, in board game form. And that is something that ever since I became someone who plays a round of Hearthstone Battlegrounds almost every day, I've been thinking if someone could do this in a tabletop format in a way that's engaging and fun, this could be a really big hit game. And lo and behold, it even says in the description, if you think this all sounds like a board game adaptation of a digital auto battler, we are proud to tell you that this is the first of its kind. So that is absolutely what this is. They go on to describe things that you know sound very similar to what I have seen in some of these auto battlers, but again, it's in tabletop format. So it says in the team phase, you will choose new members and add them to your team that might consist of a wizard, an alien, a cat, a gangster, or a kraken. Um, those are, I would imagine be sort of like the tribe types if you're familiar with Hearthstone Battlegrounds. There's different tribes and they usually can power each other up in different ways. So you can form different builds based on that tribe, whether you're going towards, you know, in this case, the Kraken build or the cat build, whatever. I would imagine that's sort of what we're getting at here. Um, and then there's 75 distinct characters with over 40 exciting effects that again, depending on how they come out and what you have available to you in the, the you know, the supply to be able to choose from, you're gonna be able to build a different strategy every time you play, I would imagine, um, and then take that out and it's tournament style battles against other players. So you can play with up to eight players, tournament style, where you know every round it might be these two people against, the, uh, one this person against this person, these two people play each other, these two people play each other, and then it's an elimination style with whoever's the last one left. So you're essentially carrying out Hearthstone Battlegrounds on your tabletop. That I don't know how many times I would actually get eight people together to play this physically in person. The fact that I could is pretty neat, but the fact that you can play this solo and the fact that you can scale it and do two people, four people, six people, whatever the case may be, sounds really good. Everything about this um, has me super, super excited. I'm like hesitantly optimistic because I, I think that this is going to be a tough thing to. Uh, it's the same it's the same way I feel about Slay the Spire, the board uh, the board game coming out. Is I'm so excited about it, but I'm hesitant because how well can this amazing video game translate into a board game space? And the fact that it's you know they're really taking their time to deliver it well is something I'm feeling optimistic about. I hope that's the case here too. I hope this isn't rushed out or something that's trying to be the first and capitalize on being the first. I want this to be done right. And if it is, and especially if the solo experience is great, I could see this being a game that I set. Up, just like I play Hearthstone Battlegrounds, I just set up and enjoy a bunch of rounds of this by myself as well, or with people when I have them over. So really excited to learn more. We do have the cover art revealed, but that's pretty much all we have revealed for images. As we find out more, I'll definitely be following it closely. 
And lastly, today we're gonna look at a game called Fife. Now, Fife is um, a game that completely caught my eye because of the box art, um, which is goes to show you how important it is to have really stunning box art sometimes because it, it can be the thing that makes you look at the back of the box or really just dive in to see, well, I love how great this looks, but let's see now if I'm gonna enjoy the gameplay. Luckily, the gameplay that what we know about Fife sounds pretty good. So essentially, you're gonna have this grid in front of you and you're gonna be getting these tiles that are sort of oval shaped. It reminds me a bit of uh, if you've played Emotep when you slide the the sleighs into the, the locations of the, of the board that you're going to. There's these little like indents where the sleighs can go in. That's honestly what it looks like all over the sides of the board here. You can see the images on the screen. Um, and those are going to be your scoring conditions. So uh, other games that did this recently that I played where I uh, was Village Green for instance where the scoring conditions for an entire row or an entire column is going to be dependent on what you slot in in terms of the tile. In Village Green it was cards. So you're going to to be slotted in these different scoring condition tiles and then also collecting tiles to put into the locations that are circular on your board to try to match those scoring conditions and score as many points as you possibly can. Uh, that is a concept that just speaks to me. I really like that gameplay mechanic. I really like that style of game and the ones that I've played um, and the fact that the art and the theme is just so beautiful in this is just an added bonus because it just sounds so much fun. So this is one that, you know, these tile lane games and games that involve these simple mechanics with this deep strategy and variety from game to game with which which, you know, scoring conditions you're gonna put in, which tiles you're gonna collect, um, player count variety. Those are games that stay in my collection long, long term. I play very, very often because as much as games like Gloomhaven or Tidal Blades are ones that I absolutely adore, they hit the table less because they're more demanding of players and then they require more rules teachings, um, they require more time investment. So even though I like to have those in my collection, I continue will continue to buy them and, and they will be among my favorite games. Games like this are the ones that you know tend to resonate with me the most and spend the most time in my collection. Sometimes climb their way up my most uh, you know most loved list and most played list, especially because of how often I'm bringing them out to introduce to people. So Fife is one of those ones that I'm hoping will be sort of enter that realm of game as well because it has all the the ingredients it seems like from what I'm seeing it's just a matter of putting it into practice and seeing how it plays so I'm going to be following this one closely it's coming on in 2022 apparently hopefully sooner rather than later that is Fife and those are the seven games that I am currently as of January 2022 very excited about let me know in the comments which of these games you're most excited about if there's one that you didn't know about then I've now brought your attention to if there's one that you knew about before I started the video and you said oh I know Dylan's going to announce or, or talk about this one because it's on my list um, let me know I'm always curious to hear if there's any games I've missed that you're, you you have written down in your phone right away as a game that you have to follow and you're expecting to see on here. Let me know what, that, I, uh, that I missed it so I can go check it out for myself, maybe include it on a future list. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. A little tip off for you guys in case you aren't aware, you probably are not aware. Uh, we have a video coming out uh, this Thursday uh, as the time of this posting on January 27th that you will not want to miss. Some pretty exciting channel announcements and just announcements in general that you will not want to miss. So keep your eyes glued on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss that video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.